All right, today we're taking a big dive. We're gonna drain our fuel system. We've got our uh, single cylinder, single carburetor on the NX650. We're gonna be draining all the gasoline out of this motorcycle in preparation for winter storage. Uh, we had some foresight with uh, running this bike. So we've gone through the carburetor on this once. Um, kind of do that with pretty much everything that we have come through the shop that's gonna be a running, riding motorcycle. We're gonna open up the carburetor clean everything out, clean those pilot circuits out, clean our main jets, clean our uh, emulsion tubes, get, uh, get everything where it needs to be. That'll be another video at some point, but we've done our diligence. We've done this bike right, and uh, now we wanna keep it right. So we've been running non-oxygenated fuel all season. Uh, it's a foolish move not to do that. So if you're running anything other than non-oxy fuel, you're penny pinching. If you're running ethanol in your gas it's a bad idea uh, we go as far as being cautious where we pick up our fuel from in regards to if it's a nozzle that shares two different gasolines so if you have a nozzle that can pump both ethanol fuel or non-oxy fuel based on what your selection is um, in motorcycles that's a no-no uh, what the reason is is in a sports car or a collector car when you're filling 20 gallons uh, when you go to the gas station and you select it, it doesn't really matter if a few ounces of ethanol fuel get in your tank. It's going to be diluted enough where it's not going to cause any major issues. In a motorcycle, that's not quite the case. We've got really small gas tanks. we got to be careful of what we're putting in them. Even just a little bit of ethanol fuel is enough to taint our gas. Um, it can be a surprising amount of ethanol fuel that can flow in your tank if the previous person to use that pump was using... 91 ethanol fuel. Uh, even if you switch to non-oxy, you're pumping that old gas in there that they were pumping before. You gotta clean, you gotta siphon that system out. So uh, I have had situations where I've had my pickup truck and a motorcycle in the back, and there was only one nozzle available, and I've pumped that first five gallons into my truck, and then I'll go and fill the bike. And that is a band-aid way to do it if you're gonna pinch, but really you wanna avoid that in any way you can. We keep gallons and gallons of non-oxy fuel on hand so that we don't get in that situation typically. But, you know, at some point you gotta do what you gotta do, but be mindful of what you're doing to your motorcycle with what you put in it. Um, it's the end of the season now. We're gonna drain this out. Uh, our personal take on this is if you uh, don't have fuel in it, fuel can't go bad, right? You can't have fuel issues if it's all completely drained out and sitting clean over the winter. Um, most of our motorcycles are stored in a heated storage facility. In this case, this bike is going to be stored in an unheated climate, but uh, we see that as something that isn't as big of a concern to us. Yes, you can have flash rusting in your tank. Yes, that's possible. I don't typically see that when I do this. I have stored um, even just empty fuel tanks on the shelf in cold storage. I really don't see much flash rusting in those. Uh, if we do happen to have that, Yes, you can do your vinegar flush. You can follow that with baking soda. We, we've we tried Metal Rescue. Kana is the same. We, we still use vinegar too. It really is an easy, cheap method that's super professional. It won't ruin your paint. Uh, but back to this, uh, we're gonna get uh, a walkthrough on how I've set up this fuel drain set up here and uh, you know how, how we can keep it simple and keep it easy with everything that you already have available. You don't need to get any specialty tools. It doesn't need to be this crazy deep dive it's just a matter of taking your existing fuel line that you have, taking your, your flat blade screwdriver and opening up your carburetor drain screw. So let's dive into that. We'll talk it over and go from there. We've got our existing fuel drain line. We're taking that from its original passageway underneath through the swing arm. And we've moved that up and just plumbed it into our gas can here. We opened up our fuel drain screw and we've left our petcock in the reserve position. We took our gas cap off to give the best flow we can and we're going to just set this up and we've got it outside it's nice and safe plenty of ventilation and i'm just going to let this run while i take care of other tasks in the garage um when it seems to be done i'll kind of stand the bike up lean it from side to side shake it a little bit and oftentimes that'll re reignite the fuel flow basically it'll kind of shake things up a little bit and get some extra fuel flowing that might have uh, might have stopped moving. So we've got some clear fuel lines here. It's pretty easy to tell if we uh, got all that out of there. 
And we know that once we've done this, because we're draining our fuel from the lowest point, we're draining everything out of the system. There's nothing that can be stagnant. No bad gas comes spring. We'll be ready to pour our new fresh fuel in and be good to go. One thing we got to make sure we do is uh, when you're done, close that back up. Last thing you want to do is have your fresh gas be pouring all over your garage floor because it's coming out of your overflow tube. So when we're done with this, we're going to reroute our overflow tube back. We're going to close that carburetor back off and we're going to be ready for spring.